Hey guys, there's nothing like a good old fashioned middle of the night smoke filled backroom deal cut by Congress to violate the Constitution. And unfortunately, this is the kind of tyranny and lawlessness that gun owners have come to expect from the swamp in Washington. Apparently, House Democrats are hoping to compromise internally to gain support for both police funding and an unconstitutional assault weapons ban at the same time. And after all, it was only earlier this week that President Biden said, if you can't support banning weapons of war on America's streets, you aren't on the side of the police, please. It was also this week that Gun Owners of America was laughably attacked in the House Oversight Committee for calling for the abolishment of the unconstitutional police agency responsible for enforcing infringements on the Second Amendment, like gun bans, gun registration, and taxes on the Second Amendment. And apparently Democrats think that their opposition to the Second Amendment should be taken as support for police. None of that makes any sense. But gun control does not increase public safety or serve a common good. It only serves to restrict the right of people, which is necessary to the security of our free state. And in fact, if police are calling for gun control, and there are a few anti-gun elitist police officers doing that, then they're the ones who are opposed to the people and the common good. In fact, Pew Research found that less than a third of police support a ban on assault weapons. I'll say that again. Less than a third of police officers support a ban on assault weapons, or whatever they call assault weapons. And get this, in a survey of 15,000 verified law enforcement professionals, here's what they found. Virtually all the respondents, like 95%, say that a federal ban on the manufacture and sale of ammunition magazines that hold more than 10 rounds would not reduce violent crime. The majority of respondents, 71%, say a federal ban on the manufacture and sale of some semi-automatic weapons would have no effect on reducing violent crime. But more than 20% say that any ban would actually have a negative effect on reducing violent crime. Just over 7% took the opposite stance saying that they believe a ban would have a moderate to significant effect. 70% of the respondents say they have a favorable or very favorable opinion of some law enforcement leaders, public statements that they would not enforce more restrictive gun laws in their jurisdictions. Way to go. Similarly, more than 61% say they would refuse to enforce such laws if they themselves were chief or sheriff. But that polling of police officers gets even more interesting. More than 28% of officers say having more permissive concealed carry policies for civilians would help most in preventing large scale shootings in public, followed by more aggressive institutionalization for mentally ill persons and more armed guards or paid security personnel in public. The overwhelming majority, about 90% of officers, believe that casualties would be decreased if armed citizens were present at the onset of an active shooter incident. And more than 80% of respondents support arming school teachers and administrators who willingly volunteer to train with firearms and carry one in the course of the job. That's something we've been talking about for a long time. Let teachers who want to be armed be armed. More than four in five respondents, 81%, say that gun buyback programs are ineffective in reducing gun violence. Thank you. More than half of respondents feel that increased punishment for obviously illegal gun sales could have a positive impact in reducing gun violence. When asked whether citizens should be required to complete a safety training class before being allowed to buy a gun, about 43% of officers say it should not be required. About 42% say it should be required for all weapons, with the remainder favoring training classes for certain weapons. Okay, so real quick, some police officers say that gun violence in the United States stems from violent movies and video games. That's about 14%. There's another 14% who say early release and short sentencing for violent offenders is at fault and poor identification or treatments for the mentally ill individuals is about what 10% say. 
the majority, 38%, blame a decline in parenting and family values. So if Democrats make a big mistake and take up the assault weapons ban, it won't win them more support for rank and file police officers. Their support for banning so-called weapons of war actually pits Democrats against the majority of police who support the right of the people to keep and bear arms. This and other types of miscalculations is what's gonna cost Democrats the midterms in 2022, because this assault weapons ban is the same as the one in 1994, but just with a bigger engine inside. That one cost Democrats the majority in President Clinton's first midterm. If Congress really wants to help solve crime and wants to listen to police based off the numbers I just read you and listen to GOA and of course listen to all of you, then they should vote on Congressman Hudson's HR 38, the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act instead. Gun Owners of America and our members stand strongly against the possible consideration of unconstitutional gun control laws. GOA will be key voting no on any anti-gun legislation that's passed. All right, that's it for this week. I'll see you next time.